بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اے ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک وچ از اباؤٹ دا وائس از ایکٹیو وائس اینڈ پیسو وائس وی ہیو ارلی اراؤنڈ ٹاک اباؤٹ اینڈ ڈسکس تھارلی اباؤٹ دا نریشن اینڈ اباؤٹ دا ٹینسز ایز ویل سو سم ٹائم پیپل آر کنفیوزڈ ان وائس از اینڈ نریشن سو I have in detail already discussed the narration. Now I like to talk about the voice. So first of all, what does voice mean? And what does active mean? And what does passive mean? Voice, as you know very well, means sound. Active means when something or someone is active. he is active he is performing any action and passive is the opposite of active so when we put this active with the voice it means the voice we are talking about the sound we are talking about that is active and passive voice the voice is passive so it doesn't mean the sentences if i am speaking now if i am speaking a sentence silently that is passive voice and if i am speaking a sentence with a loud voice that is active voice so how we can say one voice is active and one voice is passive or one sentence is active or one sentence is passive so which is the basic thing that makes the difference between active and passive now what is the part of the sentence when that is active the sentence is called active and when we deactivate that one the sentence is passive so earlier on uh, at the beginner level you have just learned that he writes a letter and a letter is written by him so he writes a letter is active and a letter is written by him is passive but probably you are not well aware what is the real application as we have discussed what is the real application of direct and indirect narration in the previous lecture so the, now we have to discuss the what is the real application so we just are randomly following the rules and rules and rules language is a living thing and that is with the purpose of spoken and written forms and for communication so if there is no application of active and passive voice then why we are using when we can say that he writes a letter why we are saying a letter is written by him so let's discuss about this thing this is the need of time need of the user of the language where he opt for the active voice or passive voice so uh, probably uh, let's discuss first what is active voice and what is passive voice active voice is a voice what is the part that's what i was talking about when the subject earlier on we have al- already discussed also that subject is the doer of an action when we are talking about a sentence we are speaking something and the subject we are talking about if he is active in the sentence then that is active voice like we say here ali plays cricket now who plays cricket who is performing the action ali and ali is at the initial position of the sentence so ali is quite active here and the passive when we deactivate this ali so if you write the sentence here when subject is not active subject has been deactivated that cricket is played now this is also the complete and right sentence so i have not used ali here that's what i am i was telling you that we only randomly are following just rules and rules and rules we are not going towards the real application now that's why i did not put by ali here so this is the real application sometime we want to talk about the subject and sometimes we don't want to talk about the subject sometimes being the user of the language i want to 
highlight the subject, tell about the subject, then I'll use active voice. I mean, when I'm talking about the cricket and who is playing cricket, Ali is playing cricket, then this is active. But if I don't, don't want to tell that who is playing cricket and I like cricket is played, it means uh, cricket is played, but who is playing that has not been mentioned. So I have deactivated the subject here. So that's the purpose. Another purpose is importance. When we want to give more importance to the cricket, cricket than early, then we deactivate early and put it at the last, last position. So what could be the real application while you are using the language? Uh, for example, there are three friends, A, B, and C. If the friend A has stolen the book of friend C, and the friend B would like to inform to the friend C, and he don't want to tell the name of A, so how he would tell, give, pass on the information, there are many other ways, but here he can use the passive. So he intentionally will say to the uh, to C, your book has been stolen. He could have said, A has stolen your book, but he didn't want to mention the name of his friend. He want to just pass on the information. So that's why he didn't use the subject. He deactivated the subject, and that's why it is passive. So this is activized and passive and this is the real application while you are using this in your real life language. So let's move on towards passive now. Usually we are changing the activized into passive and the rules we are going to study if we reverse them, them then we can change the passive into active. So now if you want to turn on one sentence from active to passive then we need to go through different rules. But first, we would like to discuss few exceptions. So there are basically five exceptions. So mm, these are the five exceptions that we are going to talk about. Uh, when we want to change these kind of sentences, they cannot be converted into passive voice. One is the sentences that have intransitive verbs so in that kind of sentences like he plays they laugh we go to the university now here we have no object when we have no object that cannot be converted into subject how we can deactivate the subject so these kind of sentences where we have intransitive verb they cannot be converted into passivized this is first exception now here there may be two conditions of intransitive verbs. I mean, one is like this one. He plays. Now there is no object. Then how the action can transit? So this is intransitive. And when there is no object, how we can make it passive? We have to convert the object into subject. Same is the case with this sentence. They laugh. The laugh is here. When they laugh, here there is no object again. So this is one way how. Uh, we can omit the object and this is one way of transitive. Another transitive is when we use the artificial bridging. Like here we have used this word too for the artificial bridging. So in that case, again we go to the university. Go is intransitive verb. So in both of these cases, we can't make passive. Now what are the other exceptions? Present perfect continuous tense. We can't make the passive voice of present perfect continuous tense. Why is it so? Because we know there is, are already that Ali, uh, for example, uh, let's have a, Ali has uh, been playing cricket uh, for many years. Now in this sentence, you can see we have already three verbs. So there is, it is already exhausted with verbs. So there is no other place and no, uh, no, in no other way we can use any other verb here. It would look quite odd. So that's why this kind of sentence can be, cannot be converted into passive. And same is the case with past perfect continues 
here again we have three and same is the case with future perfect even in future per perfect we have another verb ali will have been playing so how much more verbs we can add to make it more exhausted that's why these three are all also exceptions that we can't make the passivize of perfect continuous tenses whether it is present perfect past or future perfect and then again there is a similar case the future perf future continuous tense we cannot make it passive as well few linguists say that it's passive can be made that the boy uh, will be playing cricket but few again are of the opinion that the cricket will be being played by the boys so if we make the sentence like this uh, cricket will be being played by the boy so we are making a complication will be and being we are using this together so it looks odd and uh, i'm not going in that research and detail whether it is right or wrong but there is a varying opinion to keep it simple for the student to avoid complexity i would also agree with those people who say that this is exception so that's why we can't make it specific as well so these are the exceptions now you can look here if we uh, look for there are four kind of tenses which cannot be converted into passive then th how many tenses are remaining eight so we can make the passive of these eight present indefinite present continuous present perfect present past indefinite past continuous past perfect future indefinite and future perfect but even we can't make the passive of these sentences if they have any intransitive verb because we have thoroughly discussed this exception as well and this is a big exception so we can make the passive of eight tenses and even if any of the sentences from these eight tenses and it carries an intransitive verb that cannot be converted into passive now let's move forward quickly towards uh, the conversion of passive now there are very few common rules uh, i have made it short for you so these are the common rules which will be applicable in all these eight tenses okay if they have transitive verbs so these rules commonly will be used in all these and one rule is changeable fifth that will vary from each and every uh, out of these eight tenses so what are these four rules number one subject will be converted into object number two object uh, converted into subject number three third form in any passive sentence do remember the third form of verb will be used and then we use by before the converted subject and it is not necessary if we are making we are not converting but we are making ourselves passive so now you can look at the sentence she listens the lecture the lecture now here by her here we have applied the first rule so we have converted this subject into object okay we have applied this rule then the lecture is the object here so this object has been converted into subject in this sentence you can see the same color of the same rule application so here the rule 2 has been applied then third form of the verb in the red color you can see here we have changed listens into listened because we have we have to use third form in the passive and then this is the fifth rule by before the converted subject now this subject has been converted into object and we have to use by so these four common rules have been used here now the fifth changeable rule with every tense we are going to discuss now let's start with the present indefinite tense now you can look she listens the lecture this is present indefinite tense and the lecture is listened by her now 
the previous five rules we applied already and I have explained. The fifth changeable rule we have used here is. So, in present indefinite, the fifth changeable rule is we can use helping verbs is, am, and are. And according to newly converted subject from object to subject, its uh, agreement uh, in number and gender we will use is, am, and are. Like you can see here, she listens music. She listens me. Now me has been converted into I. This is subject now. Now new subject is I. And I accordingly takes am. So I am listened by her. She listens them. When they, them is they here. So accordingly we are using they are listened by her. So this is MR will be used according to newly added subject and it will agree with its number and gender. Then let's move on to the past indefinite tense. So uh, there is another example of present indefinite. The letter is written, a letter is written by him. They write the letters, then with the letters we have used R. A letter is taking is. So we are using is am are here as a fifth changeable rule. Now move on towards the past indefinite. So in past indefinite, is am are, you know the past form of is am are is was and were. So here we are using was and were as additional helping verb here. So they write a letter, a letter was written by them. And they write letters. So letters were written by them. So all four common rules are applied and this fifth changeable rule has been applied here. So let's move on to the future tense. And there is another example of the past indefinite. She listened me. I was listened by her and she listened them. She listened them. I'm sorry, it is listened them and they were listened by her. So now future indefinite. So here changeable rule is MR and the root form of is MR is B. So we will use B here. They'll write a letter. A letter will be written by them. We shall write a letter. Letters shall will be written by us. So we are using B here. Fine. As additional. Letter will be, I have missed here, written. So third form of the verb. So these are the indefinite tenses. So here basically we are using the root form or is, am, are, or be form of the verb as an addition, as a fifth changeable rule. Now move on um, to the, there is another example of past indefinite. We are not discussing it. You know it very well. Uh, sorry, this is the example of future indefinite. We were discussing about future. So we have discussed it. Now move on. Continues. So present past future continuous tense. So as we know why I have made it this future red because in exceptions we have studied that uh, future continuous tense cannot be changed into passive. So this was exception as we have discussed already here that future continuous tense cannot be converted. So that's why I have marked this one as red here because it cannot be converted into passive. So, uh, about present continuous tense, so here we are using being and then the third form of the verb. So, they are writing a letter. A letter is being written by them. Now, according to a letter, we have used is, then being written. This is third form plus uh, being. Then she is writing letters. The letters are being written by her. So here we are using being plus third form for the present continuous tense. For the past continuous, we are using being plus third form. They were writing a letter. The letter was being written by them. She was writing the let letters. Letters were being written by them. Then Moving ahead, uh, as future continues, is not converted, so that can't be changed. Let's move on then towards perfect.
so present past and future perfect how uh, they can be changed uh, now they take the verb been as an additional fifth changeable rule they have written a letter a letter has been written by them she has written letters then letters have been written by them according to this letters we are using have according to this she we are using has they and you know it very well about the present perfect rule he she it uh, take singular verb and uh, the rest plurals take the plural verb so accordingly we are using the singular and plural verbs here then in past perfect there we use been they had written a letter a letter had been written by them she had written letters letters had been written by her so we are adding here been and all this then future perfect here again we are adding been they will have written the letter a letter will have been written by them she will have written a letter letters letters have will have been written by her so this is about future perfect now and the rest perfect continuous tenses we know these all perfect continuous tenses are not changeable they can't be changed these are three so here we have we are done with it now if it, i'd like to tell you briefly the changing rules what are the changing rules these are the four common rules that we have discussed these are the fourth common rule and fifth changeable rule and to in the end to make it more easier for you in indefinite tenses whether it is present indefinite past indefinite or future indefinite there we are using the be form of the verb be if we are using its present form so that is is mr in present indefinite we are taking that one in past indefinite we are taking its past form was and were and in future indefinite we are using the true form be so that is the fifth changeable rule for indefinite tenses now common rules for continuous tenses in all continuous tenses we use being plus third form of verb so the rest is going on same mean man mean uh, he is hitting the ball well so the ball is being hit well by him he was hitting the ball well so the ball was being hit well by him okay and future continuous cannot be converted and then there is a common rule also fifth changeable and common rule but common for the perfect we use been mean uh, he has hit the ball well the ball has been hit well by him he had hit the ball well the ball have had been hit well by him and then if we say he will have hit the ball well the ball will have been hit well by him so this is all about passive voices in the next lecture shortly i'm going to discuss how the, the imperatives can be changed into passive and how the model verbs the sentences which carry the model verbs they can be converted into passive so a short lecture will be dis, uh, will be given later about these two things so upcoming is about imperative in the conversion of imperative sentences and sentences with the model verbs so that's quite easy uh, let's discuss it later on so far it's so long so thank you very much